everybody. It's good to be back for the live streams. Uh, we're going to have three this week. So today, Wednesday, and Thursday. So uh, we're, uh, we have some, two of these stories are from this week. And uh, one of them is a holdover from last week. Uh, and hopefully we'll get some new stories that are fresh for tomorrow. Uh, I have one kind of that I'm holding on to from the weekend that, uh, so don't worry, we're going to be good. We're going to be good. But this is the first stream of the week, and you know what that means. Five memberships from me. Just like uh, Michael and Lady Jennifer Snow and Paul and Danny, I saw that you gifted a membership. Oh, you guys are so nice. All right, hold on. Let me join the party. I'm going to gift some memberships here. Here we go. Five memberships that are just the beginning of every week because I want to match the incredible generosity from the group. Here they come. Add those babies to the pile. Oh, yeah. Hey, Ross. Uh, and also, we're going to have a BTT Inside Access. Uh, oh, thank you, Dancing Dog 60. Uh, a BTT Inside Access uh, next week because there's one a month. So if you're a member at that level, that's a private Ask Me Anything. All right, so, ah, gotta stay hydrated, guts to stay hydrated. Thanks for gifting a membership, Rashad. All right, so, uh, Polly, thank you so much. So, oh, yes, right, Mika, I met Mika for the first time. Mika has been a wonderful member of the BTT community for years. Oh, by the way, speaking of great uh, members of the community, Jerry, thank you for gifting 10 memberships. Uh, but Mika was at my Challenger screening. And I'm so glad that he came up and introduced himself afterwards because I finally got to meet you, Mika. It was really cool. He, I was like, oh, what's your name? And he goes, Mika. And I'm like, oh my God, are you that Mika? And I recognized you, I made the connection between your, I don't, do you still use your photo? Let's see here. Mm -hmm. Trying to look for where you just wrote that down. Um, I don't see your thing. No, Mika, see, you don't have an avatar photo. For a little while, you did. And I, so I was like, ah, oh, yes, it's Mika. So it was very, I'm so glad that I was able to, um, to meet you. Yay. Uh, this is a, uh, this is a member stream. We do have to have a subscriber stream as well this month. And so, uh, maybe sometime this week, maybe tomorrow. Uh, all right, so we got three stories to discuss. You know the rules. Keep your comments. Oh, Mika, that's such a sweet thing for you to say. Thank you. I really, it was very nice meeting you. Uh, all right, so uh, Mika uh, reviews films for NYU, and that's why he was there. I was like, oh, how'd you get into this screening, Mika? It's like, oh, I'm reviewing it for NYU, and I was like, that's awesome. Uh, all right, I'm really working hard on my Challengers review. I'm hoping to get it up this evening. I'm almost done with it. Uh, I always plan to go to sleep earlier than I, I want, and then I don't get up on time, and it ruins the day. I'm tr but tomorrow I got to get up early for X Men. Let's see what X. Let's see what they're doing with X Men '97 tomorrow. I don't. It's gonna. I'm, let's see what kind of uh, episode it is. All right. So anyway. All right. So you know the drill. Keep your comments and questions to the story at hand. I will. Uh, I will pay attention to your comments and questions at the end of each section. But then, of course, at the very end, we'll have the Q open Q and A where you can ask me anything that you would like for the final 10 minutes of the stream. All right, so that's right, Adam Sphere. Tomorrow is the second half of life death, and it's, you know, it's storm-centric, but we don't know what other players might come in. We're, I'm curious. All right, so hold on. I got lots of pictures loaded up here. Let me get down here. Story number one. Where'd it go? Oh, wait, I see. Boop. All right, I'm getting to the stories. You got a little bit of a sneak peek. All right, so boop. All right, so here we go. Keanu, Keanu Reeves is voicing uh, Shadow in Sonic the Hedgehog 3. All right, so they had the tease for uh, Shadow at the end of the last Sonic movie. There he is there. That's the tease from the movie, him in the red there, uh, that red picture that I have at the bottom. And I was, you know, when it came up on screen, I was like, that guy's clearly important. But, you know, just like Mario, I don't play Sonic. So, but I certainly understand the fandom and I know that it's big. And the Sonic movies have done quite well. So Shadow obviously is going to be the, the big new addition for this movie. And I can tell you that Scoopers have been trying to figure out who is voicing him for weeks. Uh, I, I've had, you know, some of my sources asking me if I've heard anything, you know, where everybody's like, oh, have you heard anything about Shadow? Who's voicing Shadow? You know, so uh, that was uh, something that was, uh, you know, I'm telling you, the Scoop community really wanted to break this. And it was uh, actually, uh, let's 
I'll give credit where credit is due. John Campia broke it yesterday morning on his, on his live. And I remember uh, one of my sources was like, do you think this is actually true? And I was like, hey, dude, you know, he's in the SpongeBob movie. So why wouldn't he do a Sonic the Hedgehog? That was my response. I was like, Keanu ain't above, uh, you know, he ain't above uh, doing a family film. Now, I also think that one of the nice things about Sonic is the pedigree of the film franchise, right? You've got not only Jim Carrey doing his best work in years, uh, but also Idris Elba. Idris Elba is fantastic as Knuckles. In fact, he has his Paramount Plus show. Uh, anybody watch Saturday Night Live this weekend? I love Ryan Gosling uh, in the, as, uh, the, as the guy married to a Latina. And so, you know, it's really, you know, so he's hanging out with these Latina guys and it's changed his whole, like, the way he handles himself. And they were doing a joke about saying Paramount Plus. It was very funny. Uh, so anyway, they should, uh, I mean, it's unfortunately that it's a peacock, I mean, um, SNL is a NBC show, so they're affiliated with Peacock because that would be a fantastic Paramount Plus ad. Uh, all right, so anyway, uh, Knuckles debuts uh, April 26th, the, uh, the Knuckles uh, spinoff show, which actually looks pretty solid. I'm waiting on screeners because uh, I'm like, you know what? It's kind of slow. I'll review that show because uh, I think it looks pretty good. And I also like the guy who's the live action deputy. I think he's pretty funny. Uh, all right, then the other thing that some of people have been pointing out is that Idris Elba, not only, is, not only is he with Keanu in the Sonic movies, but they were both in cyberpunk. They both have done cyberpunk uh, characters. So that, is, that can't be a coincidence. So I think Idris Elba probably talked it up to Keanu, and he was like, great team of people, and he, you know, I'm sure he's making a lot of money off of it. And he's like, you never know, Keanu, you might get a spinoff show on Paramount Plus yourself. Uh, Keanu doesn't need the money. Keanu Reeves has Matrix money. He has so much money from the Matrix, he's giving hundreds of millions of dollars away to other people who worked on the Matrix, to be fair. Like, he's really famous for that, in fact, because he's just so nice. Like, he gave, like, not maybe not hundreds of millions, but tens of millions of dollars to the VFX crew. He's like a sweetheart, but he has enough money for the rest of his life because of the Matrix. And now also, John Wick. And he's been very supportive of John Wick. He's, you know, he has a cameo in the Ana de Armas spinoff movie because it takes place before John Wick 4. I don't want to ruin the end of John Wick 4, but obviously that's important. And then he really can just do whatever he feels like at this point in his life. You know, he's really interested in motorcycles. Uh, I mean, he's, he's a great guy. He's awesome. Uh, and if this is what makes him happy, that's great. Now, who is Shadow? From what I can see, Shadow is like the Batman version of Sonic the Hedgehog, right? So you can see maybe Keanu being a good choice for that with the quality of his voice. But I have to say, he did a voice, I saw one of you note that he did the voice of Boom Kaboom, Duke Kaboom, in Toy Story 4. And I gotta tell you, I thought he was only okay in, in, in Toy Story 4. I thought that his cameo got old pretty fast. Uh, I would agree with you, Nick. I think Hayden Christensen would have been a better choice. He was rumored to potentially be Shadow. Because, you know, of course, he voiced uh, Anakin Skywalker, a.k.a. Darth Vader. You know, he, he portrayed the character. I think Hayden Christensen would have been a more interesting choice, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah, that's right, Heather. Keanu Reeves was Batman in Super Pets. He was pretty funny there, but thankfully they used him sparingly. Good, good, uh, good thing to point out, Heather. But, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think that Hayden Christensen, I think, would have been, like, a better character to full-on play the role opposite Ben Schwartz. I feel that Keanu Reeves is stunt casting, and I think it's going to get old real fast. So it makes me wonder how much Shadow is actually in the film. So we'll see. I mean, I, don't, I mean, Idris Elba is such a good Knuckles. I never expected Idris Elba to do such a good job as Knuckles. So I think it could work out, and it'll be great to have Keanu obviously promoting the film. It'll be great to have him on the red carpet with Jim Carrey and Idris Elba. I mean, I mean, and poor Ben Schwartz is like, I'm in this movie too, man. But I mean, that's a great g group of guys. You know, like you're almost like, I wish this was a lead action, a live action show uh, or movie. But, you know, I think it's a fine choice. Again, as I said, I think there are better choices. I think Hayden Christensen would have been a better choice. But this was fun. It did what it was supposed to. It got the movie trending on Twitter yesterday. It makes Sonic 3 seem fresh and exciting. And at the end of the day, I think that's all that really matters. Uh, I'll be curious to see how long the Sonic franchise can go. So far, they're making a lot of money. I thought, I think the movies are only okay. 
um, because I'm not a Sonic fan. I think they're better than Super Mario in terms of accessibility for non-fans. And I enjoy them largely because I just like seeing Jim Carrey kind of back in his element. Uh, but the last one was like, oh, that's right, Ben 10. Kristen Ritter is also voicing a character as well. Uh, love Kristen Ritter. Um, but, you know, like, uh, like the last one got a little more into the game mythology. And I was like, yeah, you know, it seems a little bit like more of the same. Uh, but I'll never forget when I went, there was a child in the theater because, you know, they had opened it up to not only guests of people who'd been invited, but they had some fans in there from Paramount. And there was a child wearing a Sonic the Hedgehog full body suit eating their popcorn. This little boy was adorable. And I was like, that kid loves Sonic so much that I can see, you know, these movies exist for fans like that. So... We'll see. I mean, we'll see how we'll see how the film performs. Uh, but I think it's fine. I think again, I think Hayden Christensen would have been a better choice. But he didn't get it. Poor Hayden Christensen. He's like, what's it gonna take for him to have a comeback, man? Uh, all right. So that's the second story of the day. Hold on. All right. Story number two. Boop. Margot Robbie, what are you doing? I'm. I actually feel somewhat good about this idea. But I'm surprised. So it was announced during CinemaCon that Margot Robbie is producing yet another toy movie. First she did Barbie, then she just made a deal to do The Sims, and now she's doing Monopoly, uh, which was announced at CinemaCon for Lionsgate. I guess Warner Brothers passed on it. Uh, oh, I forgot to ask if you had any questions about Sonic. Hold on. My bad. Sorry, a little rusty. Does anybody have any questions about Sonic? Sorry, I'll go back to Barbie in a minute. Reboop. Steve says there are no questions. <laughs> oh, hold on a minute, Steve. I'm, I, I appreciate your enthusiasm for the Margot Robbie story. Uh, you guys don't have any Sonic questions. I guess you guys aren't a lot of Sonic fans. All right, we'll go back to the Margot Robbie one. Interesting. Uh, the guy tie, I think Christian Ritter's playing like some kind of bat character, like a female bat. Dory, I'm glad you're a Sonic fan. That's awesome. All right, you guys are ready to go back to Barbie. I mean to Monopoly. All right, that's fine. All right, so here we go. Reboop. All right, so back to Margot Robbie. So not only is she doing this uh, Monopoly movie for Lionsgate, but Hasbro is teaming up on it because Hasbro owns the right to Monopoly. That to me is just crazy because of course she just, oh, that, oh Gareth, that's so generous of you. It's so nice to see you. Gareth is always so generous. Um, but anyway, Hasbro is a competitor with Mattel who she worked with extensively on the Barbie film. So that to me is crazy that she's working with such a strong Mattel competitor. Maybe she's bringing the toy community together. The funniest thing I saw was somebody tweeted out, you know, the, the picture of her after she meets those teenagers in the Barbie movie, and they said she was, uh, what was it, like a, a fascist or something? Hey, Fran. Oh, I love your photo. Thank you for gifting 10 memberships. Uh, and she was like, she, and remember, Barbie says that she doesn't control the, the railways or the flow of commerce. And someone tweeted, now she does control the railways. And I thought that was really hilarious because, of course, she's making this Barbie movie. I think the key here would be who she has as her, who she casts in this film as the producer, and then also who she has as the writer-director, because I think that Barbie was, the thing that made Barbie work was hiring Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach to be behind the camera talent, and then I really think not only herself, but Ryan Gosling as Ken was crucial. Oh, wow, AG, 20 memberships. Oh, that's incredibly generous. It's raining memberships. Make sure you have opted in to accept gifts so that you too can get uh, a membership, um, you know, when people are being so generous. Really, AG, thank you so much. Uh, so I think obviously, and I saw some, I think I was Dory questioning this before the stream started, who is going to play Mr. Monopoly, a.k.a. Rich Uncle Pennybags? That's the, of course, iconic character that's associated with the game. And that casting is going to be key. You know, part of you thinks maybe it'll be Will Ferrell. He, of course, was in the Barbie movie already as the head of Mattel. He did a great job uh, in the Lego movie. Ah, oh, Mika, you beat me to it. Ah, oh, you beat me to it. Okay, so anyway, uh, Will Ferrell to me seems lazy. But I agree with Mika 
Brian Cox is for real who I would consider casting. Everybody loved Succession. Uh, and I think that Brian Cox being a uh, rich uncle putty bags in a top hat with a monocle and a cane doing a take on uh, Logan Roy would just be absolutely phenomenal. Uh, so I, I seriously would cast Brian Cox. I, I think he would just be phenomenal. Uh, and I think it would really uh, work with the, with, the, with the game. And I think it would make it extremely timely. And, you know, Brian Cox is not above a paycheck gig. So I think you could get him. Brian Cranston's not bad, Elia, but I think that Brian Cox would tie it into succession and it would just absolutely be perfect. Um, and I think it would pull it into being, you know, fun for adults. I mean, let's see who they get. I think it's really crucial casting. Um, but let's see. Uh, the movies can't all be meta, though. That's something that concerns me. Barbie was extremely meta. I think The Sims is going to be meta. Is Monopoly going to be meta? Barbie was already kind of a, con a commentary on capitalism. How the heck are they going to do that again with Monopoly? How are these all not going to seem like they're in the same world? Maybe they are. I mean, I'm interested to see where Margot Robbie is taking her career. It seemed like she was really trying hard to get an Oscar. But now it seems like she's trying to be the Kevin Feige of toy movies. And I got to tell you, that's not necessarily a bad goal. You know, she already made 50 million off of Barbie. Maybe, you know, maybe she feels like she's not going to win an Oscar anytime soon. So she might as well make a freaking ton of money, you know? And I mean, let's see if she can replicate her success with Barbie. Uh, I mean, she did a, fin I really feel she did a phenomenal job with Barbie, but I feel like everything else that she's produced has been for a much smaller niche audience. You know, stuff like Promising Young Woman and um, a salt burn. So I feel like, I don't know if she can repeat the success that she had with Barbie, but I'm, I'm open to her trying. I'd love to have a very successful female producer. I think that would be wonderful for the industry. So, uh, but I think that these movies are going to hurt her trying to get an Oscar, honestly. I think they're gonna be like, oh, you mean the producer of Sims and the Barbie movie and, uh, and Monopoly? I mean, I think that, you know, I think Barbie already did a lot of damage to her as a strong artistic persona, as you can see from how it was not treated well during award season. Uh, so much so that they broke her spirit to wear Barbie dresses to these things. It was actually sort of sad. You were like, no, Margot Robbie, wear the Barbie dresses. Finish the run. Finish strong. I think maybe one of the dresses she wore to the Oscars was like a weak Barbie dress that you were like, oh, technically it's a Barbie dress, but not really. Like she never wore like peaches and cream, you know, and like the classic iconic Barbie outfits that people were hoping to still see. And it was sad. It was sad that they broke her spirit like that. She should have just gone all the way, but oh well. Uh, so, but I feel like this, these choices that she's making are going to hurt her uh, in her pursuit of an Oscar. Uh, Dancing Doug 60 says, Robert Downey did a lot of lousy stuff, but he, I don't, and he did win an Oscar, but only once he finished with, um, only once he finished with Marvel, you know, he just said he'd go back and I'm sure he will, but he took a break to go get an Oscar. He's like, I'll be back, Kevin. I must go get an Oscar. And he got one. Um, and I think that, uh, I think even though people dislike the Marvel movies in the industry, I think they still feel like at least they have some ownership of it because Robert Downey Jr. was so crucial to it doing well, you know, and, and getting it started. So... All right, so let me, I'll ask you, you guys want a poll? All right, hold on. Hey, JS. All right, I'll do a poll. Do you think Margot Robbie is right to produce these toy movies? Yes. Then, uh, Bar, uh, no. Sims, yes. Monopoly, no. And then we'll do Monopoly, Yes, Sims no, and then just a straight no. Anyone can vote in a poll. Only members can join the chat, but anyone can vote in a poll. Fran says, Grace, do you think the context of the upcoming elections might raise the wealth and capitalism subject to everyone's interests? I got to tell you, Fran, I don't know if people will be that interested in going to the movies to discuss something like that. People don't like talking about that stuff. I think it's a downer. Uh, and that's why some, often those kind of movies don't do particularly well that uh, explore that stuff. Unless, you know, it's like something like Wolf of Wall Street, which is very risque and has le freaking Leonardo DiCaprio in it. 
so I think that, you know, of course, that's a very important discussion. And I think we'll factor in a lot into the upcoming presidential election. I don't really know if people want to see a movie about it, particularly like a toy movie, you know, like Barbie was not preachy, you know, which is amazing that it was able to avoid that. The famous Kiki, six memberships for free and for, you know, uh, free membership six months in a row. You must be very engaged with this channel, which is awesome. And I do see your comments a lot. If you really want to get a membership, the best way is to like videos, to be a subscriber, to have been a member in the past, to uh, comment in a whole bunch of videos like the infamous uh, Kiki is. And then, yes, YouTube will select you for those free memberships. Um, let's see here. Uh, um, film fantastic or film fanatic Margot Robbie is not doing the Pirates movie. Wiki Nomad says, get Leo to be Uncle Moneybags. He'd never do it. Um, he'd never be in that sort of movie, but that would be interesting. Uh, hi, Isaac. I like your guy saying, what about Scorsese? You know who would be interesting if you got Adam McKay to do it, but I think Adam McKay is not very good at doing uh, commercial stuff these days. But although he did do Succession, interestingly enough. Adam McKay and Will Ferrell actually produced Succession. J.A. says, maybe these are streaming movies. I don't know. I don't think so. She wouldn't be able to make enough money. What would be the point of her doing these if they were streaming films? Ricard, okay, we'll do questions now. Hey, Oralysis, thanks for gifting a membership. We'll do questions now about the Barbie, Margot Robbie Monopoly movie. Um, let's see here. Uh, Ricardo says, will she put herself in any of these movies? I hope not because she was in Barbie. Uh, I can maybe see her doing a cameo if she feels maybe the script is particularly good, but I don't think she's going to be starring in any of these films. Britt says, should the movie's goal be for box office or awards? I think for box office. I mean, I hope they're quality films, but after the way things went down for Barbie, I think it's um, unusual. Isaac, hey, to you in Mississippi. I'm glad you can be in the chat. Dan says, would you say that Barbie equals the patriarchy, Monopoly equals capitalism, and what about Sims? Do you think this is something that she's going for? You know, you mean like her trilogy? I mean, maybe. I'd be really amazed if she was able to pull off something that, that was that focused, considering that she can't keep Greta Gerwig around and stuff like that. Uh, I think that Barbie's about more than just the patriarchy, though. I think that's part of what Barbie's about, but it's about so much more. I really don't know if you could duplicate what Bar Barbie is so unique. I don't know if it's do if you could. I mean, for, we were worried enough about being able to do a sequel or a spinoff movie, but I, I think it's unlikely. And again, I feel strongly it will hurt Barbie if she tries to apply that same strategy to The Sims and or Monopoly. Marcello says, will Margot ever pick another big character or is it Barbie and Harley? Is she just going to stick to those two? Well, you know, never say never, but I think that she'll stick to Barbie and Harley for now. I think she's done with Harley, to be honest with you. I mean, again, never say never. I think someday she'll come back. But I thought she really wanted an Oscar. But maybe right now she also just really wants to make a ton of money. Let's see. Um, I had thought she was going to focus on trying to get an Oscar. Danny says, what would you recommend for Margot if you were her agent? I would have told her to go for the Oscar. I'd, I'd be like, you got everything else, girl. Um, and I would tell her to not damage Barbie. I'd be like, really, I need her to protect Barbie. But um, that does not seem to... Maybe she thinks that she is. I don't know. I'm nervous about it. That's right, J.A. She's filming a movie with Colin Box Office Poison Farrell. Did you see how low the fall guy is expected to open? $33 million. That is what people are projecting right now. Side note, Ryan Gosling's Fall Guy is expected to open with $33 million as the kickoff movie for the summer. That is just so horrible. I mean, I guess it's above his usual $11 million, but I mean, wow, that is not translating from Barbie at all. I mean, I'm just like really surprised that it's so low. Like, I think it looks great too. Who just said that? That's right, Paul. I think it looks amazing. But I, I'm just shocked that it's so low. I mean, it would have to be like 50 or above for this not to be embarrassing. So hopefully the last minute, there's a lot of walk-up business. But that's right, J. Jonah Jameson. He really, was, he really is just Ken. 
And no one can ever take that away from him. But I mean, like, that's really bad. Uh, all right. Yeah, Michael, the, Michael McKennis, the movie business is really struggling right now. It's actually a little scary. I hope it bounces back. It'll bounce back, but whew, this is a rough patch for all of us. So thank you again for those of you who are supporting through gifting memberships. I, I, it means a lot. I, I really appreciate it, particularly at times like this. Uh, all right, so I think we're ready for the third story. All right. Uh, thanks, Danny. All right, third story. Hold on. There we go in a second. Boom, baby. All right, Jonathan Bailey for the new Jurassic movie. All right. This is actually, I think, very exciting. Now, Dev Patel, interestingly enough, was rumored the other day by Daniel RPK, I believe, to be in talks for Jurassic, the new Jurassic movie. Oh yeah, I forgot the poll. I am rusty, sorry, hold on. Poll results, thanks Chris. 44% of you love these toy movies, 26% of you don't. 17% of you are only backing the Sims movie, while 11% are only backing the Monopoly movie. That's not horrible. So I think maybe they, she could go with this. We'll see what happens. Uh, not bad though. All right, so Dev Patel, uh, the question is, did Jonathan Bailey drink his milkshake or are they both going to be in the movie? I don't know. I got to tell you, I personally like this cast, but I think Gareth Edwards should not be allowed to cast his own movies. I'm a little nervous. I'm like, mm, I mean, there are going to have to be a lot of dinosaurs in this movie to sell it. Uh, you know, I feel like these are not strong draws. You know, even ScarJo, I think, is hit or miss. Again, I like the cast, but I worry about whether or not general audiences are going to be into the cast. Uh, so we'll see if Dev Patel joins, uh, joins them or if maybe Jonathan Bailey, as I said, took the role. All right, so who, and if, if Dev Patel didn't get it, I think it would be because Monkey Man did not do that well. And I think Universal would be like, uh-oh. That's the benefit to being Mr. Jonathan Bailey. He still is an up-and-comer. He does not made a big film, and so there's no referendum on whether or not he can sell movie tickets. Uh, that's right. To be fair, Ben 10, Chris Pratt did a lot to really sell the first movie. Uh, I mean, the, the new trilogy. Chris Pratt was, uh, I think, a big part of why those films did so well. Uh, but they're going in a different direction. You know, Gareth Evans is directing, his own, is casting his own type of person. I think definitely these very much fit with the, his previous casting choices. So who is Jonathan Bailey? Jonathan Bailey comes from Bridgerton. That's him in the Bridgerton uh, Netflix red carpet in that photo. But as some of you just pointed out, Kay Walton just said, and a couple of you others, he's going to be in Wicked. Uh, Wicked 1 and 2, he has a very large role in Wicked, but you know, the movie hasn't come out yet. So he's very smart to sign on for Jurassic before the movie actually comes out. And he's like, hey, you know, you don't know how it's going to do. It could be huge. And as Slow Mo pointed out, these are both Universal films. So apparently the people at Universal who are watching the, the dailies or the first cuts for Wicked are like, we like this guy. We like Jonathan Bailey. Let's put him in uh, Jurassic, uh, the new Jurassic film. So Scarlett Johansson is, you know, it doesn't seem like her deal is closed yet. I haven't seen, uh, they said she's still talking about it. So, um, uh, oh, that's right. He was in Knock in the Cabin. Who just said that? That's right, Bara. I hated that movie. Jonathan Groff. I love Jonathan Groff. Jonathan Bailey was uh, very good in, in Knock, at the Ca Knock at the Cabin. I thought he did a nice job. Um, but I was, my, all, my eyes were totally on Jonathan Groff. I was like, Jonathan Groff, why don't you get more work? Why didn't the Universal executives like Jonathan Groff? For Jurassic World, I feel, so, you know, this is a very exciting opportunity. So let's talk about this, all right? Um, just trying to make sure everything's going there. All right, all right, okay. Uh, all right, so um, Jonathan Bailey is a somewhat openly gay actor. Uh, the reason I say somewhat openly is that he you know, tries, you know, he maintains that his private life is private. Although he has, you know, he is in fellow travelers, as some of you are pointing out. Um, was he not in um, Knock at the Cabin? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Let me, let me Google it. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, yeah, that wasn't him. It was Ben Aldridge. Okay. Thank you, guys. Ben Aldridge was great in that movie. Okay. All right, so uh, Ben Aldridge. All right, so back to Jonathan uh, Bailey. So I have actually never seen Jonathan Bailey in anything yet. I don't watch Bridgerton, uh, and I have not seen Fellow Travelers. But I know that a number of you are very big fans of Jonathan Bailey. So Jonathan Bailey is, um, as I said, somewhat openly gay. He uh, keeps his private life very private, uh, but he has played some LGBT roles, including fellow travelers with Matt Bomer. So I want to have, the reason I bring that up is because I really am a big Matt Bomer fan. So it would be a very big deal for him to land a lead role in a blockbuster like this. You know, Wicked, you can understand him being in Bridgerton while he's cast in Wicked. Wicked actually has a number of LGBT actors in it. Um... Uh, oh, I'm blanking on the name. Ooh, sorry. I can't believe it. One second. Mm-hmm. Bo and Yang. Ah, Bo and Yang. I love Bo and Yang. I love you so much, Bo and Yang. So Bo and Yang is in, in the movie. Uh, and so uh, I'm very excited about that. So I can understand why, uh, you know, Jonathan Bailey would have been cast in Wicked, you know, and I know that Wicked has an extremely strong LGBT fan base. But to put him in a Jurassic movie is extremely, an extremely big deal. And as many of you said, it would be nice if maybe he was playing an LGBT character. He doesn't need to play an LGBT character. It's going to be a big deal alone that he's in the film. But... If he was playing an LGBT character, and that's right, Elliot, he is playing a straight character in Wicked. He's playing a love interest for the two female leads, a love triangle situation. But uh, I think that it would be nice if he was playing an LGBT character who was not there just to be the LGBT character. If he was a full-on Jurassic character who happened to be LGBT, that would be really a big deal. And the, I think for the, for, the whole commu- for the whole LGBT community and for LGBT characters and blockbusters, you know, because usually they tend to be tokens or they're unfortunately, like look at what happened with uh, Jungle Cruise. That wasn't even an LGBT actor. And so we really want to move away from that. And so this seems like an opportunity to maybe do that. And it would be huge. I mean, it would be huge even, again, just to have an openly LGBT actor in a movie like that, in, uh, the, in what seems to be the male lead, would be huge. Would be just absolutely huge. Um, what else? Hold on. I am blanking on names today. I want to point somebody else out. B.D. Wong, thank you. Okay, B.D. Wong uh, played, obviously, in the original Jurassic movies and has been in the follow-ups, and he is an openly gay actor, but uh, I think, you know, it was obviously a different time and not a lot of attention was paid to it, and I I don't even know if he was uh, open, uh, you know, if he was an out actor at the time that he was in the Jurassic movies. Uh, But it's still, it would be really a big deal. So let's see. Let's see what, what they decide to do. But it's, it's very exciting. And I do feel a little bad for Matt Bomer because uh, Matt Bomer just is at the wrong time. You know, he just missed this kind of, these kind of performances. Uh, Jonathan Bailey is uh, about 10 years younger than Matt Bomer. Uh, Matt Bomer is an incredible actor. He has done a great job in many projects, uh, most recently on Doom Patrol. Uh, he also was really good on the revival of Will and Grace. He had a small role in Maestro, where he broke my heart. He broke everybody's heart with just a look. You were like, oh, Matt Bomer, you, you know, don't let this guy be mean to you. Uh, but I feel like, you know, and also don't forget Matt Bomer was in the Magic Mike movies, and, and, you know, he got a lot of attention for that. But I feel like, you know, Matt Bomer just at the wrong time, you know, like, it, it would be great. I mean, Matt, it's, I mean, to some degree, um, 
you might be like, oh, well, you know, if these actor, you know, these actors, you know, they're just missing, you know, this, uh, these opportunities. So, but let's see, Jonathan Bailey could open the door for a lot of LGBT actors to be in big blockbusters. And so we'll see what, what happens, but it's very, very interesting. All right. So let's try not to out any actors who aren't, uh, out, who have not been, um, who, who have not spoken about their personal lives. All right, so any questions or comments about this story before we go to the Q&A? Well, Josh loves movies. Coleman Domingo is in the Michael Jackson movie. Uh, Ross, this movie's set to film very soon. They're just kneeling down the cast, and as soon as the cast is ready to go, I think it looks like they're going to go into production. Because, you know, they're racing to release next year. Yesy, every single other Jurassic movie, the last three have made a billion dollars. Every single one. I do feel that this movie is not casting itself aggressively, so I'm a little nervous about it. Uh, if it doesn't make a billion dollars, that's going to look bad for... Gareth Edwards and his cast. Um, but I hope, you know, people love dinosaurs. And so I hope it delivers. Elise, we don't even know the story yet. It's all very hush hush. Aubrey Small says that uh, they feel it looks like a $600 million movie. That would not be good. Uh, I think maybe it could do a little better than that. Maybe like Dune 2 level, close to 700. But 600 is actually a pretty good guess, Aubrey. Uh, Marcello, this is a whole other trilogy. That's the idea. Well, you never know because, you know, the original cast showed up for the third film in this new trilogy. So you might have callbacks, but it is focusing on an entirely new group of characters. Atmosphere Godzilla is right now in the mid 400s. Kareem, I hope that's more LGBT representation than that. I don't think so. I'd love for him to call to his family, you know. I don't think it should be a photo. I think it should definitely be, you know, part of who he is, but only a one facet of who he is as a character. Oh, Gareth Edwards' Godzilla film? How much did that make? Oh, Jack, you're auditioning for your husband? <laughs> Let's see here. I'll tell you how much it made. Okay, back in 2014, Gareth Edwards' Godzilla made only 524. So that's a great question. So that 600 million is looking like a great guess. Uh oh. Let's see here. Wiki Nomad says, let's get DeWanda Wise in there. Yeah, I, felt be I feel bad DeWanda Wise joined the Jurassic franchise, you know, the new trilogy, just as it was ending. And now she's stuck not being a part of it. That's right, Jerome. Maybe he'll significantly bring down the budget of the dinosaur movie, but it doesn't matter because it's got to make a billion or it's going to be bad because all the other three movies made a billion. Seattle Law Nerd says, Grace, who would you cast? You know, I got to tell you, maybe Alan Richson because I think he's trying to be the new Chris Pratt. He's, he's going to be, the dinosaurs will take one look at how big he is these days and be like, nope, forget it. <laughs> He's just huge. He's so big. Um, but Alan Richson, I, I would want someone, well, although Alan Richson just, you know, really hurt his relationship with conservative audiences uh, with some of his comments. But I think, you know, I would want somebody that played to the conservative audience, you know, uh, and then I would balance them out with some other people. But I would, I would try and get someone like, I would get a new Chris Pratt. That's what, who I would try and get if I was trying to be like uh, a really good producer. That's right, Danny. Alan Richardson can just punch a dinosaur in the face. <laughs> it's crazy. 
But I think he would have been a nice choice. Glenn Powell Marcello would have been great, as Dancing Dog 60 just said. But um, Glenn Powell is uh, already doing too much other stuff. He just got the uh, Edgar Wright movie, which I don't know about. Edgar Wright's had a hard time at the box office. So we'll see. All right, let's go to the, um, the oh, Barra says, what about Anthony Starr for the conservative audience? That's a great choice, Barra. You made up for making a mistake about Jonathan Bailey. I think Anthony Starr would maybe be fantastic. Although he's, you know, he's quite liberal in real life, so, but you know, he balances things out very well. Uh, he's a great choice too. I would like, I would consider him as well. I mean, he'd basically just be Homelander versus dinosaurs, but I don't care. <laughs> I'd be like, who doesn't want to see that, man? Those are two great guys. And that doesn't mean these other people, uh, Jonathan Bailey and Scarlett Johansson and Dev Patel could maybe still be in the movie. But I, I, need, I need one of these dudes to be my new Chris Pratt to keep, to keep that audience, that other audience in. Because I really needed, I, I would say that to everybody else. I'd be like, wouldn't you like to make a billion? Because if it doesn't make a billion, it's going to make you guys look real bad. So I feel like you should uh, be nice to Alan Richson and Anthony Starr. Jesse, hey, Jesse says, with the casting of Jonathan Bailey and the success of X-Men 97's Beau DeMeo, who is very open, I am curious as to the future of the LGBTQ folks in media both on and off screen. I think it's an exciting time. Wait till you see Challengers. I think it's very exciting. Uh, of course, at the end of the day, what's most important is how these things perform in terms of ratings and box office, but I think that there are some really great steps being taken forward here, and I talk about that a little bit in my Challengers review. But I think it's really great. I think it's really, really uh, fantastic. Um, and I think that it's because audi the audience is changing. I think that's a huge difference. Uh, I think that the audience is finally changing, and so uh, you have, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, you have broader appeal, and I think that there, you see more support from audiences for uh, out individuals, and that's uh, helping them substantially. Hey, Mickey. Yeah, Ragu, I don't know why nobody hires Billy Magnuson. He's great in Roadhouse. All right, so let's go to the Q&A. Hold on. All right, so you can ask me anything you'd like for 10 minutes. Hold on. Booyah! All right, it's 4.50. You can ask me anything you'd like till 5 o'clock, and then I must work on the Challengers review so I can go up today. All right, hold on. Present Progressive says, any tea to start off the week? Uh, I haven't heard any tea lately. That's not going to get me in trouble. Let me see. Hold on, let me look. Let me see if I can have anything that I'm not going to get me in trouble. Uh, Captain America 4 is still very much about vibranium and adamantium. You know, I told you the vibranium wars. Let's see there. Hold on. <laughs> that other thing's too spoilery. And the other thing is that I heard that Armor War maybe won't get made. Armor Wars. But what about AI Tony Stark, man? That's the whole reason for that. All right. Shay says, Jonathan Bailey or Glenn Powell for Warren Worthington III. Oh, I don't know, man. I think, I don't know. I'm really worried about the future of comic book character movies. I honestly feel like most people don't care. Seattle Wandered. Oh, look at you. Look at your nice photo. You're so generous. That's so kind of you. 20 memberships. My goodness. Thank you. MM92 says, hi, Grace. What do you think Disney's top priority should be to gain back mass-wide public love and success like they used to have? Oh, I don't know. I don't want them to abandon embracing the people that have supported them for so long and work at the company. So they can't do that. I think they just have to ride it out. As I just said, the audience is changing. 
And I think that, you know, you're in that transition period, right? Where you have one half older audiences and one half younger audiences, and they're very different. So I think if they just, Disney just keeps going. I think if Disney just keeps it head, its head down, maybe is a little less political and preachy, I think they'll be fine. My day's going great, Steve. It's so nice to be back with you guys. I missed you. AG says, if not Deadpool and Wolverine making a billion and being this year's Barbie, what film do you think will be this year's number one? It better be Deadpool and Wolverine. I'm not sure, but I think, I think it's going to be that movie. This is a rough year. 2024. Sucks. Let's see here. Michael, I did see Timmy C as Bob Dylan. He does seem miscast. I'm like, also, I got to tell you, I couldn't care less about the story of Bob Dylan. I mean, I know some people think he's really great, but let's see. Uh, Wiki Nomad says, what should I expect from Challengers? My review's coming. I'm not going to ruin my review. Let's see here. It's a, it's a sexy movie, though. Sexy movie. Don't see it with your parents. Let's see here. Classic Bunny Librarian. I love your name. Says, do you think that Sony is looking closely at Toby Spider-Man movies re-releasing this month? Can they consider continuing his story? Yeah, Sam Raimi's talking about it a whole bunch. Although Kirsten Dunst should stop saying that she didn't get paid enough because it's like... Kirsten, don't you want to come back for another movie? I'd make another Tobey Maguire movie for sure. I'd make another Andrew Garfield movie. I don't know what's taking so long. Hector says, how do you think the Deadpool uh, popcorn, what do you think the Deadpool popcorn bucket will look like? I mean, Ryan Reynolds is a marketing genius. It's going to be fantastic. I can't wait to see it. Tiff says, can we get some thoughts on Invincible Season 2? I know it's been a while since it ended, but I am hungry. Oh, okay, Tiff. I really loved it. I think it's a shame that they just killed any interest in that by splitting the season in two and not advertising it enough. I was going to cover it, but there was so little interest in it. And then also they dropped it 24 hours early with no warning. And I hadn't done my breakdown yet. I had planned to do it within those 24 hours. Uh, it was an important lesson to learn about Amazon. But uh, that's why I didn't cover the show. Because I was like, and I know a number of other uh, YouTubers were like, what the? God damn it. So uh, it's just frustrating. It takes me a very long time to edit a video like that. I still haven't figured how to do it live like some other YouTubers do. Uh, let's see here. Rodolfo. I feel kind of bad that Crystal's leaving Real Housewives of Beverly Hills just when she was getting good. But um, she was a little mean. You know what it might have been? She said all those mean things about the other housewives. And so maybe they were like, yeah, she's got to go. I think she did say that stuff, by the way. Jerry says, I wanted to say thank you for my gifted membership. Oh, I'm so glad you got one, Jerry. Ben 10, there's still going to be a lot of hulks, I thought, I, last I heard, in, in Captain America 4. Sensation, yes, Godzilla Minus One is apparently going to be on Prime Video May 3rd. We'll try and do a watch along. Let's see here. Devin says, with how they are portraying Storm in X-Men 97, I have never been more adamant about Sophie Turner Smith as Storm. She'd be great. Totally agree. Uh, I hope they get Storm right. Ryan Coogler needs to cast that character. I'd be like, what's, I'd cut him a check. I'd be like, what's your consulting fee to cast Storm? Uh, Bara, I didn't see the Gladiator 2 trailer. I was not at CinemaCon because I pay for my own travel and stuff like that, and it's just not worth the money to go to attend that. Oh, LOL The Rings. Thank you for gifting a membership. Hey, Jaybird. Oh, Jody Turner Smith. Okay, thank you. Let's see here. Da -da. Hey, Tiff. Nice to have you back. Uh, Elise, I loved Fallout. I not only reviewed it, but I did a spoiler breakdown. I hope you'll check it out. Adam Sear says, why aren't more filmmakers as ambitious as James Cameron? You know, James, it takes a special kind of person to fight that hard. It's really hard to do. Also, James Cameron was lucky enough to have so much success off of the Terminator movies that he was able to then do Avatar, and then Avatar was so successful he could do anything he wanted after that. Uh, Titanic obviously really gave him a huge amount of capital to spend. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, you know, with everything in life, it's not just talent and ambition, but also luck and being at the right place at the right time and just how things come together. Let's 
Let's see here. Jaybird says, any plans to see Wicked before the movie comes out? I saw it this weekend in Memphis on tour, and it was wonderful. Uh, probably not. I think I want to see what it's like to watch Wicked as a non-fan. You know? You know, to see what it's like to experience the movie only. Oh, wow. Hold on. That's extremely generous of you, Seattle Honored. Absolutely love this community. And Grace, you and your review simply rock. Uh, Seattle, Seattle Honored, it's so nice of you and so generous. I really appreciate the support. Thank you so much. And, and thank you for helping me and this channel and sharing that love with other members. It's just really kind of you. Dancing Dog 60 says, will Fallout boost the careers of the two young leads? I sure hope so. If there's any, if there's any generosity in the world, they will. Jay Scott, my avocado hand is still healing, as you can see. I still have a little bit of a cut on my wrist, but otherwise it's pretty good. I am scared of avocados now, but that's okay. I'm not going to stop eating them. They're too good for you. Josh says, Grace, I love your channel. Who are your favorite YouTubers to watch? Uh, I like heavy spoilers. Uh, Paul's an awesome dude. Uh, I like... Um, uh, the pitch meetings. I think those are hilarious. I like how it should have ended. And I got to tell you, I'm a big Mr. Beast fan. I really like Mr. Beast. I think he's a cool dude. Let's see here. Shay says, how do you feel about Bette Midler wanting to be a Beverly Hills housewife? I'm for it too. Kudos to her for being so clever. I think it's a really smart idea. Uh, I bet she gets it too. see here. Aubrey, yeah, we're right. Fallout is super like Westworld. It's nuts, but it works. Ivan says, what reveals would you expect from Marvel at Comic-Con? Trailers, posters, casts, concept art, new projects? Maybe the Fantastic Four suits. I think they're going to really high. I think they're going to go hard at both. Remember, they have not only Comic-Con, but D23 is right after, but they're going to really promote. I think it'll be a good two conventions. Yaya Yonce says, what are your dream X-Men cast members? I'm just excited to see who shows up in Deadpool and Wolverine. I'm very excited about that. Uh, the Brendan V says, Grace, Rachel Zegler, and Joe Locke, Romeo and Juliet. Uh, no, it's not. It's the other guy from uh, Heartbreakers. Uh, let's see how that does. I think, you know, I'll be curious to see. You know, Broadway is not a cheap ticket. Oh, Wiki Nomad, thank you for gifting those memberships. Thank you. That's very generous of you. Uh, let's see here. Mick 3Up says, I read online that Ritter portrays a government agent. Wouldn't it be bad for third Sonic movie not to have any female? What's a Mobian? They already have, they have so many, you mean like the little animated dudes? Um, we'll see. I would love for Kristen Ritter to actually be on screen though. All right, I better get going to, I got to get on to this. I want to get, I want to get the challengers review up. All right, so let me do quick shout outs. Uh, where are you? What are you doing? Let me just say hi to a few people. Haunted Autumn is enjoying the first thunderstorm of the season in Minnesota. Sensation is waiting for a pepperoni and pineapple pizza. I've never had pineapple and pepperoni before. That's an interesting choice. Oh, Marcello's in London. Oh, it's late for you. Yeah, that's right. Thanks for staying up. Polly's sick in bed. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Feel better. You have a great two to A2, Yaya. Well, Astronomy360 is doing calculus homework in Texas. Ah, that paints a great picture. I love it. And Shea says, thanks a lot for the membership. Watching from Lima, Peru. Oh, I love it. That's so awesome. And Elliot says, I'm so glad that the live stream is back. I've been sick over my spring break. I'm at home, still sick, and slowly recovering. Aw, feel better. I'm sorry you guys are both sick. Hmm. And Jay Scott says, eating chocolate pretzels in Philadelphia. Uh, well, Ausencio is in Madera, California. And Generation Marvel says, in Dallas, Texas, approving the team's time cards. Oh, the fun. Someone's got to do it, Generation Marvel. You're the hero of the office. I love it. All right, I better get going so I can get this review up. All right, guys, I had a great time. I'll talk to you soon, okay? All right, bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.